Warning. You've reached On The Box with Ray Comfort and are now in a biblical truth zone. Place all questions about theology, current events, and evangelism on the box where they'll be weighed against the truth of God's Word. Ready your hearts and minds. You're about to be inspired and equipped to fulfill the Great Commission. Programming to engage in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to another exciting edition of On the Box, and we hope you enjoyed our pyrotechnic display just before we came on. Ray, what's up with that? Why do we have explosions? If we had know. women running the show, <laughs> with butterflies flying up. Oh, that'd stuff? be sweet. Yeah, men like explosions. It's uh, just part it's of It's a man nature. thing. It's yeah. a man thing. Well, it's so good to be back. As you know, I was away uh -huh. and uh, had a wonderful vacation. I went RVing where, with the family. Where'd you go? San Diego. I uh, took the family and some friends, did some RVing. Uh, it was an awesome time, and I'm exhausted, right? I'm starting to buy into your theory that vacations do nothing <laughs> yeah, for you. Yeah, vacations it. kill you. They, they, you cut short your life well, if you go on a vacation. It might have been the 1.30 uh, time I stayed up watching the Olympics. Uh -huh. But it's good to be back. Mark, you're back. I am back. Boy, you know, last week was a uh, was a hard time. I spent the entire week inside my bed. Now, usually when you're sick, you can have a little bit of energy to do something, and I wanted to get ahead on the uh, John Lennon video that I was editing, but uh, no chance on doing that. And then on Saturday, I did a wedding. I officiated it down in uh, Menifee area. Beautiful wedding uh, with uh, Christina and Jason. Uh, Eddie and his wife, Carrie, had done the photography for the wedding. It was an outdoor wedding, and I absolutely loved it. Were you I coughing all over them, Mark? I was not <laughs> coughing, but I think I had a runny nose that ran down to my lip. Uh, uh, but I was in the shade, and everybody else was in the sun, which is a delight for a speaker. Right, so. yeah. Had it made in the shade. That's right. Well, Ray, how was your weekend? Oh, I had a great time. World Surfing Champs at Huntington Beach once again. Oh, again? Ten trillion people. I tell you, it was just, well, that's an exaggeration. Five trillion. It was absolutely packed. Um, I thought that was just last week. They did Yeah, well, they, it's over two weeks, but there was no surf. It was just small slop, as that's how surfers put it. But anyway, right. I got there where I normally preach, and there were, uh, I think, five police officers eyeing every step I took. And I thought, okay, I'm not going to preach here. So I went down to another area, spoke there. It was just too noisy. Came up to the area I originally wanted to speak at. The police were gone. As soon as I started, they come and shut me down. They oh, said, this whole kidding. area has been shut off for the World Surfing Championships. But oh. they said, hey, you can go down to the Main Street. Went down there, and that's when they were, we had a great time. Oh, really? Yeah. You preached, preached on Main Street? Main Street. Oh, it was the whole great. Main Street was cut, closed off. Right. And uh, Scotty spoke, I spoke, and Ellen spoke. But when they were speaking, I went off and got some really good interviews. Well, for, for the Main Street's episode. pretty tight, and then you've got the buildings on both sides, so the acoustics are good. No, it was terrible. It was, oh, was it bad? You oh. wouldn't believe. It's a horrible place. <laughs> never go there. Main you Street. wouldn't believe the noise. It was just insane. Seriously. Wow. You know, uh, I, uh, when I was preaching, I felt I couldn't wait to stop. Uh, right. Scotty did well. But you said uh, it was great. It was great. Uh, Scotty got a good crowd. Alan got a good crowd. But I found it just very, very noisy because I've spoken a couple of times before. Right. And uh, But it was a good time. That's great. Yeah. Very good. Well, we have an exciting week for you. Uh, as we mentioned last week, we're going to be doing something called 180 Week. It's now been 10 months since 180 launched, mm. and a uh, lot's happened since then, right? Yeah, it's been wonderful. Uh, we're now at uh, 3.2 million hits on YouTube uh, with over 51,000 comments. I mean, you forget people see it, but they're, I mean, they're getting involved. Yeah. Uh, we have a few people on there that are regulars and are constantly engaging people preaching the gospel. Uh, the 180 Facebook page has over 315,000 likes. Uh, over 820,000 copies of the DVD have now been sold or given away all over the world. Wow. Uh, I shared last week how one gentleman was outside of his high school, uh, high schooler. And the church one, just and purchased uh, 13,000 last right. week. They're going to get them out to their whole community. Yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, very exciting. Um, and we've given them away on college campuses. Uh, it's been captioned in 32 languages. Uh, we got the Spanish version, of course, and it's now been aired on uh, 45 different uh, TV uh, stations and networks wow, around the world. Wow, that's wonderful. So that. we're extremely excited. We know a lot of you, uh, when 180 first launched, got extremely excited, and you participated with us in getting the word out. Yeah, but we want that momentum to continue. Uh, babies are dying every single day. And it's easy for us in our country to get immune to that. Um, Absolutely. And so we're, we're really excited to, to do that and to dedicate uh, this entire week to focusing again on 180. Uh, we have uh, a very exciting guest, which I'll announce here in a moment. But I want to turn to a story that uh, really blew us away, the, the story about the lady who, who's been rescuing babies in China. Oh, right. 
Um, Ray read that, I read that, and it just so moved our hearts to see what this woman is doing. And so I want to read a portion of this from the Huffington Post. A Chinese woman who has spent her life in poverty is being hailed a hero for selflessly saving dozens of abandoned babies over the course of her lifetime. According to Chinese newspaper Yanzhou Metro Daily, 88-year-old, 88-year-old Lu Xiongo has rescued more than 30 abandoned babies from the streets of Jinhao, China over the past four decades. Together with her late husband who died 17 years ago, Lu personally raised four of the orphan children while others were taken in by Lu's family and friends. Now suffering from heart and kidney failure, Lu, who scavenged recyclables from trash cans for a living, is finally being recognized for her years of quiet service, with many in her community stepping forward to lend a hand in her final days. The whole thing started when I found the first baby, a little girl back in 1972 when I was collecting rubbish. She was just lying amongst the junk on the street, abandoned. She would have died had we not rescued her and taken her in, Lou said, according to the Daily Mail. Watching her grow and become stronger gave us such happiness, and I realized I had a real love of caring for children. I realized if we had strength enough to collect garbage, how could we not recycle something as important as human lives, she continued. Lou, who has one biological daughter, single-handedly adopted her sixth child, a little boy. She has found in a dumpster at the age of 82. Wow. wow. God bless her. You know, easy. I, I was reading this, and I couldn't help but see something kind of that turned my stomach a little. They said, many people are abandoning their kids because of poverty. I don't think you would leave a kid in a trash heap because of poverty. You leave a kid in a trash heap because you couldn't care less about human beings. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it comes down to the value of human life and what our understanding is of that. Yeah. You know? And people, it's interesting how you, know, you often hear a pro-abortionist talk about how small the baby is in the womb and, and sort of justifying it in that regard. Mm. Well, I mean, it's all relative. You compare the size of a baby to a human being. Compare a baby to Shaquille O'Neal. Mm -hmm. Well, then by that, by that standard, the baby's insignificant. Uh, but it's not the size, it's not the location, whether it's in the womb or out of the womb, but it's, it's the fact that this is a human life made in the image of God. And it comes back to fearing God also. Right. You know? And so here's this woman going out, and, and, and the way she put it, you know, I'm out recycling trash. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's just like, uh, you, you got to hold the tears back because, I mean, you think about that, you know, people, people showing that their value of that child is as much as they value that trash, yeah. just throwing it on that. And we have babies thrown in the trash all the time through outside abortion clinics, at right. the back of abortion clinics, and women who deliver their own baby and drop it at the trash. It's just unbelievable what's right. happening. Well, today we're going to hear from uh, a good friend of our ministries. You've known uh, Ron DeCiani Ray for years. He's going to come in in a minute. I'm going to kick it over to Mark here to answer a question real quick. But uh, Ron has an amazing story and his connection with abortion and also what he's now doing uh, for the kingdom of God, and especially now in particular in connection with our ministry and with the whole pro-life issue. But Mark, I want to kick it over to you. Um, a, a common question that's often asked is, what does the Bible say about abortion? So why don't you go ahead and answer that for us? Well, you know, uh, Scripture deals with abortion, you know, in the same sense that it deals with uh, killing toddlers. You know, it doesn't directly address the issue, but it does in a roundabout way. It doesn't take a uh, theologian to determine the fact that abortion is wrong. You know, if one of my kids were in the other room and they were yelling, Daddy, Daddy, can I kill it? Can I kill it? What would be the natural response for me towards my child. It would be, kill what? What are you trying to kill? With a little bit more information, I can now give the answer. And if my child says, Dad, it's a big spider. And I go, kill it, son, with all your might. Kill it. But say, Daddy, it's a, it's a cute little puppy. It's wandered onto our yard. I say, no, son, don't kill it. Daddy, it's a baby. No, son, don't kill the baby. Exodus 20 tells us that you are not to shed innocent life. The Bible also goes on to tell us that God knows our inward being. He saw us being yet formed. He had all of our days numbered before yet there was even one of them. Absolutely love it. If you don't think that it's a baby, there's a website, abort73.com, uh, and you can see the baby inside the womb and what it looks like from every stage, from conception 
all the way to the place of delivery. Absolutely amazing uh, to see the stages of the baby. Exodus 23, 7 says, keep far from a false charge and do not kill the innocent or the righteous for I will not acquit the guilty. So first of all, we determine what is inside the mother's womb. It is a baby. If somebody's undetermined whether it is a baby, well, then I say don't kill it. Watch 180. Ray is a great argument concerning whether or not it is a baby in the womb. If you're not sure that it's a baby in the womb, well, you need to err on the side of grace. If somebody was hired to destroy a building and wasn't sure whether or not there were people inside that building, what would you say to that demolition expert? Hold off on demolishing that building. Why? Because you're not sure whether or not there's a baby in that womb, inside that building. And inside the building of the mom, inside the womb, we've got to be careful, even more so careful. So there you have it. Thanks, Mark. And I have my good friend Ron DeCiani with us. Uh, Ron, I've known Ron for years. Do you remember when we first met? I've, I've tried to block that out. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are probably looking now and going, man, did easy age in the short period of time. I just got to say, for those of you who don't know who, who Ron is, um, Ron's probably the most proficient Christian painter in the U.S. If you've gone into Christian bookstores, I'm sure you've seen his paintings all over the place. If you've seen this present, Frank Peretti's, uh, this present darkness, you did the cover of that. Um, and uh, what else have you done? Um, you know, God has given me a gift. First Peter 4.10 says, let every man use whatever gift they have to serve others. Faithfully administrating the grace of God in its various forms. I could probably paint or flip hamburgers. Mm -hmm. But uh, the hamburger thing hasn't worked out, so I, <laughs> so I paint. Uh, but I've painted the President of the United States, George mm -hmm. Bush. I work for the Smithsonian. Uh, most of the people might know that I uh, recently did a 40-foot uh, mural for the uh, Museum of Biblical Art. I saw that big boy when you were halfway That's, through it. That's right. Yes. He came to the studio, yes. and that was a fun day. I remember that. And, uh, you know, uh, God has just uh, blessed my life with things that uh, I don't deserve to have happen. Let me tell you, the first time we ever met, I remember it. Um, I was at uh, Christian Book Sales Association Convention, um, CBA, and I uh, was with one of my publishers, and you came up to say hi to our booth, and Mark, I don't know who you were, but Mark Spence was behind you going like this. Big wig, big wig. Because he lets me know. <laughs> Mark lets me know what's, because he's been my manager for years and my traveling companion, and he lets me know what's going on, and uh, it just made me laugh. I always remember that. And then we traveled together, and then uh, more recently, you did a, a, um, a pro-life painting. Yes. I wrote to you and asked if you'd do one. Do you remember how funny that was, that little exchange yes. between oh us? Oh, my buddy? gosh. You know, you could tell right there that I'm an uneducated man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to share the story? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I wrote to yeah. Ron, I says, why don't you think of doing a, why don't you consider doing a pro-life painting? And he immediately wrote back, he says, I used to do uh, those before I was a Christian, but I've stopped now. And I thought, what? He used to do pro-life paintings before he was a Christian. Now he's a Christian, he stopped. So I wrote back, I said, um, I, I gave details of how many people have died through abortion. Yeah. 54 million people died through abortion. And you wrote back, and you wrote back, oh my goodness, I read it as profile. Why don't you do a profile painting? This is yeah. a profile. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and he used to do profile paintings before yeah. he was a Christian, but he had stopped. So he'd, a spirit of dyslexia fell upon him. That's and, right. uh, <laughs> well, when I say uneducated, I really mean that, brother. I, I, uh, I didn't graduate high school. They just didn't want me there anymore. That's they funny. just said, please leave. That's, That's in Chicago. Uh, in Chicago. Yeah, there's, a slight, no, there's a slight accent. In, in, in Chicago. But um, I've just finished a painting that, based on uh, the 180 movie, mm. When you, when you sent that to me, I went out and just tried to find every place I could get that painting, that movie into. Oh, well, thank and you. And then you then said, why don't you, can you do a painting? And I began to pray. And I said, you know, Lord, I, uh, over the course of years, I've had many pro-life organizations come to me and say, could you do like a painting uh, of, of a baby all, you know, mutilated mm. and, you know, the blood all over? And I went... No, hmm. people aren't going to hang that up. So l most of the paintings I do, I try to show the positive side. Hmm. The, and uh, based on that, after praying, I intertwined my testimony, which uh, 
is that I know a little bit of what God said to Jeremiah when in Jeremiah 1, 5, and 6. He said, before I formed you in the womb, mm. I knew you. Right. And before you were born, I set you apart. Well, my mom walked down Grand Avenue in Chicago all by herself in 1951, was going to abort me. Mm. And I, you know, she never told me why. She she didn't say, well, I knew you were going to have a big nose or, you know, what, what, <laughs> who knew? Uh, but I do know that she lived with my dad, my grandmother, my aunt, and, of course, my brother was alive at the time, and a dog, and all it crammed in a little mm. apartment. And I think she probably said, you know, this is not a good idea. Oh. This not, and she was not a Christian at the time, although my grandmother was a Pentecostal Christian. And uh, I have to believe she was praying because as my mom got to the doctor's office, they they alerted her that this would all start with an injection. Mm. And so she said, as the needle came to her arm, God audibly spoke to her and said, don't do this. I have a plan for this baby. Wow. So the painting I've done is called Before I Formed You in the Womb, and it's the hand of Christ touching a pregnant belly. Mm. Uh, another translation actually says, before I formed you in the belly. Mm. And the the you know since we all work from reference material and models, the lady I used was my daughter-in-law who was mm. pregnant and just about to give birth to who is now Hudson, mm. our fourth grandchild. And uh, uh, it's a statement of my story. That Let's have a look at it on the screen while you're talking. There it is there. You yeah. know, when I first saw it, I didn't see the baby in the womb. I, I didn't see it. And it's, it's like many of your paintings, they're very subtle. And uh, if you look closely at that belly... Uh, you'll see the baby actually in the womb and where it's positioned. It's just beautiful in the hand you, of Christ. Do you see the shadow of Christ's thumb forming a cross? Yeah, that's beautiful too. See, yeah. he died because they don't have to. Yeah. They shouldn't have to die. He already did that. Mm. Right. So it's cruel of us to um, let just our uh, modern society tell us when a child should live and when he, when he should. And I love the way under your signature you've got 180movie.com. I realize for an artist to put that, it's like Leonard da Vinci putting a picture of a Coke symbol or something under his signature, and so it's a real departure from what, from what uh, painters normally do, but uh, this well, could save lives. Well, well brother, um, like the 180 movie, nobody has said to us, oh, how cinematic that was. Mm. Oh my gosh, the way the camera, that's not it. It's the message. Right. If the best that happens here is that people admire what I've done, mm. I didn't do anything. Right. This needs to get into nurseries. It needs to get into doctor's offices. It needs to get into every home that says we think life is sacred. And it needs to get to these places. So if we're just going to look at it as a piece of art and say, oh, what a beautiful painting, right. then I haven't done anything. Yeah. It needs to actually get to the places where it's going to remind us day after day after day that God gives us life. And some printer said he had printed them low price for you or for nothing or something? Uh, there is a, uh, you know, like, like in everything we do, and I know this happens in your ministry, you, 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 you put your offering to God and say, did the best I could, Lord. Now I don't know what to do. And uh, Grant and I, uh, my son who runs our company, uh, uh, he had somebody call and say, if you need that printed, I'll print it for free. Wow. So you can and I mean, that's a miracle. Yeah. That's a miracle because at the end of the day, all of us need to put some chicken on the table and mm. keep going, you know, and none of us are building, you know, uh, uh, big fun so that we can all run out and get a Porsche because I wouldn't even know how to drive They're it. They're overrated, seriously. Oh, oh is that Somebody right? Somebody took me out of a Porsche. I couldn't move my little legs and it was so small. I, and I, I've hardly got any little legs. Yeah. So <laughs> people can get people can get prints on your website? Yes. Do we have it on on Yes. At uh, www.tapestryproductions.com. There it is on the screen. There it is. And uh, that's where you need to go. And we've tried to keep the price so low that we're just practically giving them away and uh, let me tell you a little story because mm. this uh, made me cry um, a w w before I actually finish a painting I put it on Facebook and say okay everybody take a shot at it mm. tell me what you like what you don't like tell me if I got you um, a, a lady wrote to me and she said if I would have had this this morning I could have saved a life Wow. she said I, I go to an abortion 
clinic and I tried to dissuade the people from going in and she said there was a young couple who went in. But before they went in, I was telling them, please give me a chance to talk to you. She said, they started swearing at me. Mm. And she said, but the lady, the young girl sort of veered toward me and secretly said, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this. Mm. She said, if I would have had your painting, I would have visually been able to show her what she was about to do. But I didn't have it. How can no. I get it? And she said, they went in. Mm. And I, the reality was that morning a life was taken. So may God use this. Yeah, May absolutely. God use this. And, and it'd be great to get them framed and give to relatives or whatever. Amen. Stick them everywhere. A, a pregnant lady, give it to her. Yeah. Let her know that inside her womb is, is, a, is a life that, I, I don't know if this thought ever hits you, but over the, how many abortions have taken place? 54 million just in the U.S. Okay, 54 million that we know of. Mm. Okay? How many of those might have held the person that was supposed to cure cancer. Right. The person that maybe was supposed to be a leader to lead us into a new age. The person right. that was maybe, maybe supposed to create an invention that God would have given wisdom to do. Have we terminated those people? Yeah. I believe it's pretty possible that that's exactly what we've done mm. out of convenience. Yeah. Out of, well, this is a bad time, like my mom was going to do. It just was not a good time. Yeah. Well, you know, that's called life, isn't it? Yeah. Most things that happen in life just never, you know, they always come at an inconvenient time, don't they? But I'm glad that my mom said, no, I'm not going to do this. So is your son, your grandchildren. You know, I, I am blown away to think of the domino yeah. effect that this we all forget has. About and that. you've told me about that many times. Mm. You know, think of the domino effect who never would have lived. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, I know that when you want to do something that you just want to do, you block all, all that stuff up. That's you true. just pretend like, well, I'm not going to think about that because why should I let good information stop me from what I want to do? Well, let's face it. You need the information to know that what you're doing is a bad choice. Mm -hmm. And so to anybody today that might be watching this program or people who are going to go out to talk to friends or relatives or just people on the street, um, God creates life, and only God should be able to take life. And for us to take the position of God and be able to say, I'll tell you when this life should live or when it shouldn't live, or is, you know, I, I'm not here on a soapbox. I'm not here on a soapbox. I'm here just to tell my story, that I almost became part of that 54 million mm. statistic. I was like one more tick yeah. on the statistic. I'm just so grateful that God gave me a chance to live by telling my mom, don't do this. Yeah. But it was up to my mom to listen. Yeah. It was up to my mom. She could have said, you know what, I'm hearing voices, but I think I'll go through with this anyway. Yeah. She did. Well, I'm so pleased she didn't. Thank you. Because I'd be talking to myself right now. There you go. There you <laughs> yeah. go. Hey, Mark, do you want to pick up the next question that was sent to us? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, before uh, we do go any further, uh, whoever gives us the most thought-provoking question of the week, will you get one of these? Which is cool because uh, I haven't held this very long. This is the little resin uh, baby. It's very realistic. It's a life-size scale model, two and a half inches of a 12-week-old pre-born baby, which is ideal for dispelling the notion that a first trimester baby is simply a bunch of cells. This is not a lightweight plastic model, but is made of a solid resin that has weight to it, adding to its authenticity. And it's hand painted for further realism. The model can be used in educational settings as well as outside of abortion clinics. And if a picture is worth a thousand words, a 180 baby is worth a thousand pictures. So uh, there it is, we threw the picture up there. The one who gives us the most thought provoking question this week, uh, we will not just use it here on the air, but we will send you that as our way of saying uh, thank you for uh, throwing that our way. Now, you can throw us those questions at on the box at livingwaters.com. That is the email address to get a hold of us to send us your thought-provoking question. Now, I'm just waiting because I know that Didi, it seems like the majority of our questions that are really, really good come from Didi. She throws the questions, I throw them over to Tony. Uh, typically, in the times past, and Tony would just go, man, she's got such great questions. 
So, uh, uh, Didi, you're not excluded from this. Keep throwing them our So, way. Mike, who's Didi? Uh, Didi, she's inside the chat room, and we're friends on Facebook as well. But, boy, she has so many great questions that, that come our way. All right, well, we have uh, one more segment here, it looks like. Um, this is taken from 180, the actual movie. And if you remember, she said, I wouldn't want other people to judge me, so I wouldn't want to do that to other people. So whatever their decision is, it's between them and God. So she does not want to judge other people for doing what she thinks is wrong, but if they're going to do it, hey, it's between them and God. So if they want to have an abortion, that's between them and God. Let's not intervene and let's not interrupt that. Let's not judge them for what they do. And I, I have a thing here that says, uh, here in segment six, of women who have abortions, 37% say that they're Protestant. 28% say that they're Catholic. One in five abortion patients say that they are born again or evangelical Christians. They claim to know the Lord, yet they kill their own unborn children. And what's often referred to as a decision between a woman, her doctor, and her God, how could someone believe the biblical God sanctions the killing of innocent life for the sake of convenience? And how does idolatry impact this belief? You know, that is quite the argument that we get out there on the streets quite a bit, isn't it, Ray? Where people say, hey, look, you know, don't judge even. Judge not lest ye judge, you know, be judged. Isn't that the good book say? You know, and I like what Paul Washer says concerning that, you know, twist not scripture lest you be like Satan. So we need to be careful when it comes to things like this. We need to always be biblically errant and uh, correct. So over to you, Ray. Yeah, Mark, thanks a lot. Yeah, the, the, the problem is in the nation, we have so many people worship an idol, a God of their own conception, a God that doesn't mind murder and killing. So anyway, thanks, Ron, for being with us. Thanks, Grant, your son, who we didn't show on camera. We really appreciate it. Trust people to go to your site. God bless you guys. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. For questions about On the Box with Ray Comfort or to submit questions for future shows, please email onthebox at livingwaters.com. That's onthebox at livingwaters.com. On the Box with Ray Comfort is an outreach of Living Waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll-free 1-800-437-1893. Now go and preach the gospel.